All right, today I want to have some fun with the Pygame package. I just got my hands on this package and we can import that here. Look at the docs. And we read, Pygame is a set of Python modules designed for writing games. It is written on top of the excellent SDL library. This allows you to create fully featured games and multimedia programs in the Python language. Sounds great. So on the left here, I have a test script that I got from the with, I made slight modifications, but this script I got from the official Pygame website. Make sure to check that out. Now what I want to do today is, I want to walk through the script to see how it works and to better understand how Pygame works. And then I also want to make some small changes to see how the program behaves. But first of all, let's just see what this script does when we execute it. What we see here is that it creates a window it loads the image of a ball and it bounces that ball around. And this can go on indefinitely. Now when I want to close this window, it gives me an error message and the window is still there. So what I need to do is I need to restart my kernel, which will take a moment. And I have not entirely figured out yet why that happens. But let's look at the program from top to bottom. So on this first line here, line eight, we are importing two modules. The first one is sys, which we can also just import here to see what it is. This is the standard system module. It is uh, built in. It always comes when you install Python, you have it. And this gives you access to some objects uh, used or maintained by the interpreter. And then on the next line, we have pygame.init. And pygame.init simply initializes all the packages that come with Pygame. Wait, sorry, first I have to import Pygame again, and then we can say pygame.init, and this is initialize all important Pygame modules, imported Pygame modules. So this is just something we, uh, from what I can tell, we have to just do after we import Pygame to um, initialize everything that comes with Pygame. And sometimes we might not want to initialize everything from the Pygame package. And then we have to go into individual sub packages that are contained in Pygame, such as, for example, the something in here, for example, the surface package. Maybe we want to only initialize this or with some other stuff. And then we don't want to call this pygame.init, but we want to go deeper and just um, initialize specific modules. So now here we have size equals width, uh, comma height equals 320 and 240. So this is, uh, this is a double assignment statement. And you these double assignment statements, they're best read from right to left. So we just take these two numbers and because this is a comma, the comma essentially creates, um, from what I think, a tuple. Let's quickly verify that. 240, now test. Yes, test is indeed a, excuse me, a tuple. And by having these two uh, names here on the left, what happens is these two values are unpacked. So we assign 320 to width and 240 to height. And then size, we assign to the entire tuple. So essentially, if we just take this, we have width now being 320 and height being 240. But if we take the whole thing, we also have size. But we still have width and height as individual names. This is kind of, I don't know, I'm not a big fan of this construction, but um, that's how they do it here. Then we have speed. Speed is simply a list. Speed is just a list. The first value is two, the second value is also two. And we'll see why that, why, why it's done that way. Then black again, comma, means we're creating a tuple. It's a, it's a very implicit way of creating a tuple, but it is indeed a tuple. A more explicit way to create a tuple would be this. And it's exactly the same thing. It's just that the um, parentheses 
are explicitly known to denote uh, tuples. But anyway, it does, it does the same job. Now we have screen here. And now it gets a little more uh, complicated because so far we've just assigned some parameters. They're just numbers essentially. But now this is the first time since pygame.init that we actually call the pygame module. And there we call display. So let's see what um, pygame.display actually is. And the purpose of this module is to control the display window and screen. So this is the um, part of our code that actually creates this window where the ball will later bounce around in. Yeah. So now we can check out what kind of um, functions display has available. And there we'll see the set mode, the set mode function. Um, so let's see what that is. Set mode, the first argument is resolution. So this is that what we give here. And then we have some flags, which I'm not sure yet what they mean and depth. I'm also not sure what that means. We'll find out later at some point. Um, yeah. So by passing the size, remember we assign size here to this tuple. You just pass it um, 320 and 240. So the resolution is 320 times 240, which essentially will be the um, resolution of the window we create. And the window is, from what I can tell so far, is actually created when we call this function. It's not simply setting a mode, but in the process of setting the mode, we also create the window. Now ball. Ball equals pygame.image.load. Now this is the part where we load the uh, image of the ball. So let's take a look at this. Image, pygame module for image transfer, very nice. Um, and it, yes, this is load, gives us the ability, this is not very well documented, is it? Pygame module for image transfer, well this is not a module, this is a method. Um, anyhow, load, we simply pass the name of the uh, image we want to load as a string. In our case it's ball and this ball is a, uh, in a PH, PNG file, so we just pass it this one. And then our image will be uh, loaded. Now ball rect equals ball dot get rect. Now I'm not entirely sure what that does. I'm not entirely sure what that does. I will try to uh, execute this code. It might fail because there's no screen. Okay, it worked. So what we can do now is we can see ball now is an image probably. It's a surface, it's of type surface. And because it's of type surface, it will come with all sorts of functions that uh, help us to work with surfaces. And one of those functions is get wrecked, get wrecked. Um, so let's try to find out what that actually does. There was a mistake, I wanted to do this. Get the rectangular area of the surface. Okay. Ah, I see. All right. So this gives us the size, essentially, here. I'm not entirely sure what these are. Um, maybe you can do it in four dimensions. That would be weird. Anyhow, so I'm, I'm just going to assume here um, that this is the area of the rectangle that the, that the ball is contained in. It's not the window, but it's kind of the frame of the image around the ball, if you would imagine a frame around it. So now we get into the um, loop that actually keeps our program running. When I showed you this uh, window before, you probably figured that this ball bouncing could go on forever. It will just, the window is open and it will keep going. And the way it keeps going is this while loop. And while loop, while loops keep executing while the Boolean expression 
behind them evaluates to true. And here's a one, and that means that this loop is an infinite loop. This loop will never exit um, by itself. It will never exit on its own terms. We will later see why it's not perfectly infinite, but in general, in a Boolean context, one evaluates to true right here. So if you do this while loop, one is always true, and that's why this while loop will keep going forever. But you never want to create an infinite loop. You always want the ability to exit it. Now, here we have this for loop, and we can see inside this for loop, we have an if statement. Inside this if statement, we see if event type equals pygame.quit, then call sys.exit. So we already imported, uh, imported sys, this beautiful package here. So if we look at sys.exit, we will see that this gives us the ability to exit the interpreter. So exiting the interpreter, by interpreter it means the entire Python virtual machine. So the, um, yeah, it, effectively it means um, quitting the script. That's what it means. We quit the script and by quitting the script, of course, conversely, we also quit the uh, while loop. So this, this gives us the ability to quit this loop. Otherwise, it would keep go going forever. Now we also have this for event in pygame.event get. Now, I'm not entirely sure how this works. I'm not entirely sure. I'm not familiar with Pygame. I want to learn how this works, but um, this is a weird construction to me. I'm not going to lie. So I want to first look what is what does event do? Pygame module for interacting with events and queues. Okay. Okay. Um, Event.get. Oops. I wanted to do this. We get the event list. Ah, okay, okay. I, th I think I'm getting it. I think I'm getting it. Um, so this will get... So this one will collect all the events that happen while we go through the loop. So this 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 one, pygame.event.get, probably collects all the events. So at every turn of our loop, we want to go through to all the events and we want to check. We want to check if one of those events that happened here was the uh, pygame quit event. Because if there was a quit event, then we want to exit our program, right? So I'm not, I'm not familiar with the details yet, but I from what I see here, I can already tell this is probably what happens. So there's the uh, pygame.event handles the event queue and with get, we probably get a list or a tuple or something where with this for loop, we can loop through. All right, ball rect equals ball rect dot move. Okay, we st already have ball rect. No, we didn't get ball rect. Wait a second, we have, we had ball. Yes, ball was a surface. So let's try to see what we can, okay, ball rect. Um, dot get wrecked. Yes. So let's see if we can find out what this move function does. Moves the triangle. Okay, fair enough. And what we pass to this move function is speed. So move when we pass its speed, it will move two in x direction and two in y direction. And for now, we just have to assume this probably means two pixels. Two pixels in x direction, two pixels in y direction. And now you already might be thinking, wait a minute, if we keep moving in x direction, we will just move outside of the window. The ball will just move to infinity. So we have to catch that. We have to make the ball bounce off the uh, borders of our window. 
So here it checks if this um, ball rec dot left. I'm assuming. I'm assuming this gives the. Um, this doesn't work now, or it it works kind of, but it tells us zero, and that's probably because the ball hasn't moved yet in any way. So probably if we give right, it will be the whole 320. Sorry, that was a typo. 83, okay. Uh, okay, so. I didn't figure out all the um, relations yet between all the objects. So I was thinking it might be um, maybe this minus 83. I don't know. Anyway, the ball rect left and ball rect right, they give us the, um, from what I see here, the distance between the left border and the right border. So the left border, if it's smaller than zero, the left border is smaller than zero, or if the right border, the distance from the uh, right border, no, it's not distance from border. Can't be di it can't be distance from border. It's probably distance from, or is it? I don't know, I don't know. Anyway, um, let's just quickly think this through. Um, we can figure this out later by just, um, working deleting some of these working around with the with these with this code but what happens is essentially let's just assume this now checks if we hit any of the borders in x so left or right then we need to reverse the speed we need to reverse the speed so we need to move in the other direction and we do this just by putting the negative sign before our speed so if we take speed zero, if we take the negative of that, speed zero equals minus speed zero, then speed zero is now minus two. And if we do that again, we've inverted that. So this is how we ch keep changing direction. And we can do the same thing here in, um, for the top and bottom. And this is how we keep the ball bouncing around. Now here we have screen. screen um, let's maybe just create this screen actually. Here it is, screen. Sorry, this will, this will keep disappearing as I click here. Um, anyway, now we have the screen and we can see screen.fill. Probably just fills the screen with a color fill surface with a solid color. And now we have blit. And I actually don't know what blit is. Draw one image onto another. Ball, ball rect. Hmm. Draw one image onto another. Source test area. Yeah, I'm. I'm not quite sure yet. I'm not quite sure yet. So now finally we have pi game dot display. Dot flip. Update the full display surface to the screen. That just simply means we we do all this stuff, but then we have to actually tell our program to graphically update this because we we can just move around numbers, but we have control over the time point when it's actually displayed graphically, right? So now let's see here what we can do. So let's see first of all if we can change width and height of our window. So for this we will restart here. There we go. Let's make this um, larger. Let's make this really large for now. Save that and run. And hell yeah, this is really large now. And we can see the it goes already out of the screen a little bit. But as I explained before, as I explained before, 
this is width and height. And it's the width and height of our window because you see the ball is unchanged. It's just really just the window. So now we have this large window. Let's, let's make this a little bit smaller for now so we can actually fit it on the screen. And now let's look at this one more time and remember how fast this ball moves. All right, let's close this and see what happens when we um, change the speed. Let's make this one, one. We'll make it slower for now. And indeed the ball is slower as we would expect because now we move less in X and less than Y. So we can close this. I'm pretty sure we will also be able to make the ball move faster. For that we just increase those values. Let's put something rather high now. And then we'll see. Oh yeah, this is a very fast moving ball. Just as we expected. Closes again. And now let's see what happens when we change only one of those values. Let's revert the x value back to 1 and leave 10, leave the y value at 10. Now what, what would we expect? What we would expect is that the movement in x, so from left to right, will be rather slow. As, as in the first example when we, when we started all this. It will be rather slow, but from top to bottom it will be really fast really really fast yes and this is exactly what happens that's what we see here we rather slowly move from left to right and really fast from top to bottom all right cool now what about this very black you know if you're not familiar very familiar with programming you might look at this and say what well, what the hell is this but I'm probably going to assume that this is just RGB coding and that means that the first value is the amount of red we have in the image. The second value is the amount of green we have. And the third value is the amount of blue that we have. And when we then pass this to the screen.fill function, it will just determine the color that the window has. And because we have zero, zero, and zero, well, we have no color. And no color effectively means we'll have a black screen. So what we can do is, we can just make this 255, 255, 255. And what we'll have then is we'll have a white background. So let's see how that works. I was right. Yes, this is a white background. Beautiful. And now we can, of course, make a... Let's make a red background. Let's make a red background. Maybe this is a good way to learn about RGE. Um, sorry. RGB colors, maybe that's a good way. So this one will be now uh, 255, which I assume is the maximum. If it's an 8-bit coding, 255 is the maximum of red that we can have. So this will be all red, no green, no blue. Yes, there it is. All good, we start that. And for the finisher, we will put on some blue. Or let, let's do differently, let's mix it. Let's mix red and blue with no green whatsoever. Oh, that's beautiful. So beautiful, I will close it immediately. Um, so I don't want to um, jerk around with all these values too much. I just want to quickly check what happens when we make it slower first of all and then I want to kind of understand how this ball rect dot left works. For that I will first try to find out if we can print the value of ball rect dot left. I'll first import pi game then I will create these guys then I will see ball rec dot left is zero. So what I'll add here is I want to print ball rec dot left. And this might be a bad idea. It might be too fast. 
it might might just give crash something or give us a bunch of mumbo jumbo but let's see okay so this is quite nice you, c you couldn't see it just now but whenever it hits one of the borders the right one now the left one it prints it prints the value so once it prints one 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 eight and then minus one so let, let's try to understand why that is so first of all this is an if statement and as I explained before this if statement checks if the ball is hitting either the left border or the right border so this this thing here this code under this if statement is only executed if either this is true or if this is true otherwise the loop runs this code is never en uh, entered this, this never happens that's why we don't see a lot of things a lot of values on the screen but it's very precisely timed so when it hits the left border or the right border we print this and ball rect is either minus one and I quickly want to check if it's minus one when it hits the left border or the right border I quickly want to take a look at this because this will help us right border is 1118 left border is minus one all right right border 1118 left border minus one let's quickly see if we um, if that makes sense right border 1118 left border minus one so when it hits the left border it's minus one and that's when this is true right when ball we, we print ball rec dot left it's minus one and that means minus one is obviously smaller than zero so this part of the equation is true now here it's one 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 eight and this is roughly where um, our width end ends so this is essentially the ball moved the entire distance from left to right the entire width and that's what happens on the on the right side so that means that the ball rect dot left will tell us the distance between the ball from the left border left border minus one very close actually slightly across the left border right border one 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 eight very far let's quickly confirm again that I didn't switch that around just want to make 100% sure that I'm not telling you bullshit so right border 1118 very far away from ball rec dot left left border minus one slightly across the left border okay cool so I think this is fairly interesting I'm uh, I'm into this so far for now though uh, I want to leave it at that next video I'll probably finish up with this with this example I want to just probably find out what how exactly this works and why it's all it's always giving us this error when we uh, close the window so I try to find that out it might take a little bit more research for me but I'll try to find that out and then we move on to another example and my goal here is to kind of as I said to freestyle a little bit to just go through some pie game code because pie game is for making games and games are supposed to be fun and I want to have fun just going through a bit of Python code and this pie game from what I see here it's pretty simple it's very and that being able to do things very simply that 
that are animated and look nice. It's it's very entertaining. So I'm having fun. I hope you're having fun, and I'll see you in the next video.